Facebook. Good morning, Facebook land. What's up, YouTubers? How we doing out there? Thank you for joining me. As always, it's nice to see you. Connecticut Medical Marijuana Critic. Compound concentrates and coffee. We are here. We are up. We are finally on the air. <laughs> it is your Sunday's edition. How you doing out there? Love you, kiddo. Okay. Y'all know the routine. Again, Facebook's chat opened over here. out there. Although, let me see here. Good morning, Diana. How are you, my friend? Nice to see you in Facebook land. Double checking audio connections, making sure controls and levers and volumes are up. And want to make sure everybody can hear. All good over there? Fantastic. Kicking off our show, as always, Austin Woodward. So, let's see, wait a minute, what? That's it. That's it. Why did I just... Over here, I see someone just sent me news of... Thanks for sending over the emails already. I could I, I, I could see that being a little discerning, yes. Alright, why am I see seriously, why am I hearing audio here? There we go. What's up, Annabelle? What is a good word? I knew I wasn't going crazy. The monitor was on. <laughs> I'm like, why am I hearing a low-level me? <sighs> so, a Chicago couple saying, trapped inside their house for hours when a four-foot snake showed up on their doorstep. They didn't have a back door. Kelly saying she was shocked and terrified when the ball python showed up at the front door of her home in Woodlawn neighborhood. 
Um, the individual's wife calling their version of 911, which is 311, for help. And an individual showed up, placed a bucket over the snake before an animal care and control officer arrived. Yeah, we did talk about this one. But, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm sure that would be a little shocking. You go to walk out your door and there's a big old snake. Yeah, ball pythons are the absolute tamest of, of all of them. Um, if you had one as a pet, then you, you know what I'm talking about. They're, they are. They're very, very docile creatures. I mean, they just, you know, they like to live, and if you feed them, boy, they are happy. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. We will do that. But let me start it from the beginning here. Good tune from Austin and Zach Ledbetter. It's called Bat Weasel. start the Facebook chat computer. There you go. Now, here's an interesting one. News of the dot 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 dot. Whoa. Out of Connecticut. Police in Connecticut are warning residents. Keep a distance. There is an aggressive escaped beefalo on the loose. No, I didn't trip over my tongue. Yes, you heard me correctly. A beefalo. A beefalo is a cross between a domestic cow and a bison. Now, the Plymouth Police Department saying this beefalo bull belonged to a Massachusetts farmer. The animal escaped from a trailer outside of Plymouth Meats. Now, the animal fled August 3rd. However, not spotted again until it resurfaced more than two weeks later in the Terryville section. Officers saying that um, 
They were located, the bull, however, uh, let's see, it was located near Route 72. However, their brief capture attempt was called off when the animal displayed aggressive behavior. Now, they said this animal can be very aggressive and can potentially cause serious injuries. He got out of the cage and wrapped himself around the radiator pipes. Well, yeah, they love warmth. Absolutely, they, they love warmth. Um, a good thing to have when you have snakes... Really, it doesn't matter what kind, but either a pad, a heat pad, and it's a special type of pad, not not just like a heating pad that we use for ourselves, or they even have heat rocks. And they will clot, you know, like curl themselves around it or lay on it for their heat. So, yeah, if you happen to see a very large-looking, a cow, but, you know, just wandering around on the loose here in Connecticut, don't approach it. Call the police. That's pretty funny. That is pretty damn funny. <laughs> Austin and Adam. Well, they probably didn't think that they needed it when they first encountered it. I'm sure now they know that it's an aggressive type of animal. They'll have them have it with them. So, video okay to everybody? I mean, again, my previews look good, but you're the ones who count. Since we did get on, I mean, even late for the show, you know, at 11.45, the little woman for the JC's Power Hour will be down here at 11.15. We got out at 10.45, so she'll be here at 11.15. See, man, I need my coffee. <laughs> go that tune's called darklet again austin woodward there a little out of griffith right. well, i guess 
she's right outside the door, so... There we are, little global genius. You all know a tune that's coming up. Happens for the little woman. It could be one or two tunes, but usually it's plaid pants and barrel. of the whoa today out of Connecticut. Yeah. Yeah, um, police in Connecticut, I already talked to them about it, but still, it's, it's worth repeating. Police in Connecticut are warning residents to keep a distance from an aggressive escaped beefalo. Yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, the domestic cow and a bison. Poor thing's gonna get itself shot and it was just trying to it's trying to live its life. Well, I mean, it was basically going to get shot anyways. It was at the slaughterhouse. Well, look, when you escape from the slaughterhouse, you're allowed to live your life. That, that's not how it works. No, you're allowed to live your life. That's not how it works. You're allowed to live your life. He broke free. Not how it works. The queen of nature has spoken. What? I used to call myself. Get hurt. That's what I used to call myself when I was in summer camp. Get hurt. Probably one of the reasons I had no friends. Probably. Not to mention the fact, again, you're saying that to the boss. So, yeah. Let me just finish doing this really quick, and then you can have your chair. Because, of course, that has to be the start of today's news of the dot, 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 dot. dot. Whoa. Yeah, I'm going to have the other lights on because I'm done with the coffee, anyways. Of course, right as I go to do something, I do something. I did it. So now I need to go back over to my other page, get the address once again. I told people I need my coffee. I wasn't joking. What's up, everybody? You know who's here. Give me one second. I appreciate your patience. Facebook is being Facebook and being difficult. No, I know. It's shocking. I'm trying to just put this story out for people. I'm just trying to do my job. Yeah, I know. What was I thinking? So, there's that. There's that. Now you can go. I did it! <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm out of here for the next hour. I leave you with very capable hands, as you know. The ever sarcastic 
little woman. Yeah. You're a little nothing, my dear, at six foot. I know. You're the one who went there. I went with your height. Believe me, I know it's everything. Ugh. Where's my it's boogie woogie? everything in your mind, maybe. But anyways. Where's my boogie woogie? Not on the table. Not on the table. Whoa! God bless you. You feel like you're gonna sneeze. How the heck are everybody this wonderful, wonderful day? It is Sundays. This is JC's Power Hour. And guess what? I am JC. Did you figure that out? Did you know that? Well, guess what? Now you do. And knowledge, as they say, is power. This little kissy face right here is me co-host, Chase, with that face. Nom, nom, nom. For those who do not know, I do an hour a week on our Sundays, saying hi, saying what's up. Hello, Diana. How are you over there? Who else is over there? Hello, James. Hello, everybody. This is... I'm sure it was mentioned, but this is the last Sunday of August. You know, that means the Burr months are coming. Yes, September, October, November, December. It's my time. It's the witching months. It's my time. It's a beautiful thing. Autumn is on its way. Crispy leaves, cool breezes, beautiful things, all the holidays. I would normally say all the fairs, but hey, we don't have any of those this year. Yeah, I know, buddy. I miss them too. <laughs> so I do hope everyone is doing well. I hope everyone is getting through their days and weeks in whatever form of uh, extended lockdown, in whatever form of going back to work, working from home, um, whatever you're doing, you know, whatever, whatever is getting you through however you are surviving. Ugh. Pardon me, my dog is killing me. <laughs> what? What? He was not on the table. Sheesh. Is he snorts at you? Like, yeah. You too. Uh, oh, leave us to our weekly uh, check-in on baseball because again, it's a very quick season. Um. Most of the teams, as I look through, are right around, um, right around the 30, 
I'd say between 30 and 35 games would be like the average, you know, depending on schedules and, you know, a couple of delays and ra rain delays, illness delays, you know, there have been a few, so. So, basically, we are, for all intents and purposes, uh, about halfway through. That was a quick season. Yeah, the cardboard cutout fans are kind of cute. I mean, it... Believe it or not, it probably... At least mentally helps the, uh, the players. Instead of seeing just the empty seats, it probably does help. But, you know, believe me, I'm bummed that we're not, that fans aren't allowed to go yet. I, I told you guys I had tickets. I had really good seats to see the Steelers and the Giants in two weeks. Hmm. You know, opening Monday night. I was going to take the day off. I was going to abandon my route and my manager and everything. I was taking that Monday off and I was gone. But, okay, sera, 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 oof, and all that brouhaha. Better safe than sorry, and, and all that stuff. We'll get through it, and hopefully next year everything will be... I don't even want to say settled, situated, uh, I don't know. I'm just hoping next year will be better. Yeah. This week has also been, um, uh, very rough this week on, um, hang on, on Celebrity Deaths this week has just been freaking horrible. One of the most recent, um, Chadwick Bosman, only 43 years old. I mean, just... And for, again, forgive me if I'm saying the name wrong. It might be Bozeman and I said Bosman. I don't know. I'm not... Believe me, I'm not trying to say it out of disrespect at all. But I mean, any of these, any of these deaths are, are, are heartbreaking, but I mean... I ain't 43. Just unbelievably, stupidly young. Apparently he's been, he was sick for like the past four years. You know, he just didn't make it public. He just wanted to keep going. Same day we lost him. We also, the sports world lost, um, the uh, former NBA player Cliff Robinson I believe he was only what was he I think he was he was rather young too yeah he was only 53 so I mean it's been a rough year the hits keep coming Just trying to always remember who's there and who you can be nice to who you have because you don't know when you won't have them anymore. But back to baseball. Um, you know, 
My Yankees were doing really, really good. Notice I said were. And in the last ten games, there are only three wins and seven losses. I know a lot of it is injury-related, but I said a, a, a month or so ago that any injury, any any uh, problem was going to be magnified, for lack of a better word, for the simple reason you don't have the full season that you could be out two or three weeks and come back. I mean, a two or three week injury now is like a good chunk, quarter, third of the season, so... These injuries, not just on the Yankees, but, you know, these injuries are piling up and they're, and they're shuffling the deck. You know, right now the Yankees are still tied for second in the AL East, so if they can regroup, fine, but, you know, the Rays are in first place right now, and they're, they're very strong right now. They're at a solid 23 and 11, so, right now they are certainly the team to be, although the Blue Jays are coming up in the AL East. The AL Central is still amazingly tight. You know, they're, the first three teams, the Indians, the White Sox, and the Twins, are 20, 21, 20, and 20 wins. So, like, they're all right on top of each other. Three teams with only a game and a half difference back with really only around 30 games or so to go. Go lay down, honey. No, I know. Boo Boo's tired. I know. <laughs> While the AL West um, it is pretty well being dominated by the Athletics and the Astros. Uh, the Rangers, Mariners, and Angels are just not putting up any type of offense to even be thought about in that, in that division right now. Um, AL, uh, I'm sorry, National League East is also relatively tight. The last place is uh, first place is the Braves, the last place is the Nationals, and the Nationals are only five games back. Even though they're 12 and 18, it's still such a tight division that really nobody is out of it there. Anybody can make a turnaround. Same thing with um, the National League Central. The Cubs um, are on a little bit of a skid. You know, they've lost more games this past 10 week or 10 to games and they you know than they had in like three weeks so hang on there little cubbies see what you could do and the National League West the Dodgers are in first place um, with their second place five games behind them so they're more comfortable as far as you know, seeming to have the best lead if they can maintain. And they're still winning pretty consistently. But again, it's such a small season. It, like, literally in a week, everything could go completely flip-flop. So. We shall see what things look like. You know, there's a lot of... Not a lot, but there are some uh, trades going around and 
people being activated because of injuries, people coming back from injuries. Oof! God help me. So I'm telling you, it's 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 got to be a a real challenge right now for most of the uh, the baseball teams because they are used to I'm not sure I want to say less intense but I mean in a way the um, the time constraint is, is putting a lot of intensity where it normally isn't you know under when you have a 165 game season you know you could brush off even a bad week of losses and bounce back we don't have that uh we don't have that um what do you call it luxury at the moment I've heard through the rumors <laughs> well good morning over there Angel Kiss and hello Southtown Odyssey glad you're enjoying the show said I just I, I can't confirm it because it is through the rumor mills but a lot of the teams want to start like some of the football teams um, are going to allow so far it's not the first couple of weeks but um, like say most of the stadiums like full capacity uh Minimum around 35,000, 40,000. Again, depending on the size of the stadium and whatnot. I mean, they are all different. But um, a couple of the NFL teams have stated that they're going to allow like 15,000 fans. So it's a lot, you know, it's a lot uh, less, but at least you have some fans there. The rumor mill has stirred a few times about, you know, baseball wanting to have some fans instead of just the cardboard fans. Um, it, it, it gets very complicated because it's not, it's not just, okay, we're going to let our fans come in. It's different states are under different rules different states are under different levels of quarantine and coming back and you know it's just it, it, it gets very very complicated you know just to just to pick two random states that don't even that don't even have a major sports franchise I'm just picking two states just to have names like say Connecticut is at you know, 70% normal as far as going back to work and socializing and Rhode Island is at 40% normal if you have a team in Rhode Island that comes to Connecticut whose rules do you follow because now you're in Connecticut you could do X Y and Z but then you go back home and you can only do X and Y and you were doing Z over in Connecticut and now they kind of want to quarantine you there and there's still the interstate you know they want a lot of people who travel interstate to quarantine themselves and you know first they said for 14 days and now the CDC said it's for 10 days so it's like everything is so up in the air and everything is and I could well imagine what it must be to be you know management and to be um 
you know, on the boards that are trying to ascertain what to do and when to do it because there are so many different rules. I mean, forget about the fact that let's also not forget once football starts there's been more and more uh, overseas games. NFL goes to London and plays games. I, I don't see those happening this year. I haven't heard in a specific cancellation but international travel is way 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 down and international travel is still um, you travel from one country to another you have to quarantine for X amount of days before you could do even if you're moving back home even if you know that's why there's really not a lot of vacation doing because you have to go there, quarantine for 14 days, then you could wander around the town, and then you have to go back. And a lot of times when you go back to whatever your home country is, then you have to quarantine again. So, like, for people to try to go on vacation, instead of having a week's vacation, you need, like, five weeks. So, like, I can't imagine what you're going to try to do with baseball and football, because baseball was starting to do the same thing. Starting to go into the other countries and, you know have all this fun so now it's getting it's getting more and more complicated but as I say many times we're tough we will persevere it, it, it's it's a very frustrating thing I know several people who have been affected by either a friend or a relative getting sick, or unfortunately I know a few people who, you know, know people who have passed. So, I, I definitely want everybody to stay safe. Well, I mean, at this point, I don't think think they're going to because remember for like a good four months all sports were canceled I mean there there was no anything that's why baseball is on this shortened schedule that's why um, uh, what was hockey lost an entire season uh, basketball lost months and months and months um many even golf tournaments which isn't you know you think of golf you don't think of like a lot of people close together but even golf was canceled the british open was not postponed but completely canceled i think that's only happened one other time in in all of history of the british open and i think the last time was for a war i believe without fact checking so don't quote me until i say it's a fact but going by my memory, which is sketchy at best, but, um, I, I think the road has to be forward, not canceling again. I, 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 and no, I'm not a scientist, and no, I don't play one on TV, but I, I think, and I honestly think, and this is, <laughs> as bad as it sounds, this is where this is where we get screwed because not everybody has an adult mentality so this is where we get screwed a lot but a lot of it simply has to be people have to monitor themselves and behave in a mature responsible manner and we've seen that that doesn't always work. I mean, it, it, it works for a good 90 to 95% of the people. Unfortunately, only the idiots get all the airtime, you know, on the media. I actually think that um, it, it is 
uh, helping the esporters and the YouTubers, and it, it is giving them a bigger audience because, you know, like me and all of our kids. I mean, besides this one YouTube guy who sits here, you know, every day, we do watch a lot of the other YouTubers, and a lot, and especially my kids. You, you know, our kids love the the gamers who play video games and you know hell if I had the time I would do it because I am quite entertaining to watch uh, when I play video games and that's not me saying it that's other people who watch me because I'm one of those who's very vocal when I play video games and stuff like that and if I had the time and the setup I would do it because I play the classic games and I just get into them and, you know, have minor meltdowns. And I play the newer games and freak out, too. But especially with everybody on lockdown, the Markipliers of the world, the uh, Game Grums, they're getting a lot more viewers uh, for simple lockdown reasons. I mean, I think that they're going to keep a very good portion of the newer viewers that they have after the lockdown, I believe, because a lot of these guys are really entertaining and they're really funny. Um, a couple of them, uh, I see Randall watching a lot, and I just. In my opinion, that percentage is low. Unless there is a humongous resurgence, in my opinion, that percentage is low. Strictly for... Not even strictly. For, for both economic and uh, mental health reasons, I don't think a full second lockdown will happen unless something drastic happens and you know I'm sincerely hoping that it doesn't but I mean it could be I mean it could be <laughs> it would it would have I really think it would have to be some a, a huge resurgence and I don't see a huge resurgence happening just randomly for no reason. I mean, again, it the majority of people are doing what they're supposed to do. The majority of people are being responsible. I mean, unfortunately, we see the idiots on TV and the idiots in the news. And again, that's not the norm. That's, you know, hey, look at me, I'm being an asshole, so I get, you know, TV time. I mean, unfortunately, there's a mentality of people who do that intentionally just because that's what they want. They want to be on TV. They want their 15 minutes or whatever. Doesn't matter that their 15 minutes is for them being an idiot. They just want the 15 minutes. So. What are you going to do? Um... On a positive note, tonight is WWE Payback. We have an, a, a we have two pay-per-views in a row. This is how screwy this year has been. But um, you know, schedules and such. One of the bigger uh, surprises from last week from SummerSlam was the return of Roman Reigns. So that was a huge deal in the wrestling world. Um, culminating into... Let me backtrack a little bit. It was the match between Braun Strowman and The Fiend and it, it was a, a good match and a beat the hell out of each other match and The Fiend ended up winning the championship 
And after the match, here comes out of nowhere Roman Reigns and basically beat the hell out of those two and said, you know, this is my title, I'm back, and so we're going to have that, uh, we're going to have that, uh, well, that would be interesting. CCC the TV channel. I like that idea. We'll need, you know, we'll need to get to talking to a couple of execs and see that. Yeah, I remember the Jerry Lawler and Kaufman match. That was, that was pretty funny. But, um, Friday, they did the, uh, contract signing. And, you know, they, they drew the whole thing out, you know, all, all three of these guys have to sign the contract, and Vinnie Mac even made an appearance and told his little lackey, you better have all three of them, their signatures on this by the end of the night. So, you know, yada, 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 they're, they're, you know, in every break, you know, they're doing this, you know, chasing guys around and, you know, the normal posturing, I'm not going to sign until I put my fist down his face and blah, 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 blah. All that fun stuff. But the the surprise, the twist, uh, when Roman was sitting there at the end of the show and finally he's like, you know, I have to read the contract first, which normally they don't bother doing. They just throw their signature on there and say the hell with it. Uh, he's like, yeah, I'm going to walk, you know, his normal... I'm going to walk out of there with the win. I mean, like, what they all do, and yada, yada, yada. But, uh... Uh... The... Yeah... Definitely didn't see this one coming. Um... It would appear... That Roman has a new person in his corner and on his side. And that person would be Paul Heyman. Did not expect that one. But that one also leaves a whole bunch of questions open, you know. Can Paul Heyman be trusted? Why is Paul Heyman working with Roman? It, is, is Brock Lesnar finally gone from the WWE? Because a lot of people were just sick and tired of him. So this, this just opened a plethora of questions. And we will, I mean, get some of them answered. <laughs> Probably not all, but we will get some of them answered. Um, that... Honestly, that's going to probably be, you know, the ending match. And it's a, it's a no-holds-barred, you know, match. And honestly, right now, I'm going to say just anything could happen. I, 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 I'm not even going to make any predictions on that one. Uh, you know, a triple threat match, obviously, you know, can work for anybody's advantage anyway. And now... Um, I, I, I just don't know. I, I just don't know. How you go from being the big dog of the shield to now having the chihuahua of Paul Heyman nipping at your heels, I, I, I don't know, but we'll see if they're going to make it work. Um... Another uh, match to pay attention to, a uh, tag team match between Seth Rollins and his little henchman Murphy uh, against Rey Mysterio and his, and his son Dominic Mysterio, who obviously they are, you know, breaking Dominic into the business, and uh, so far I think he's doing pretty good. You know, he's, um, 
obviously he has the family background and he's obviously grown up in the business. be the best person to ask that question Brian would probably be the better one to answer that but um, I know that especially at the beginning of the lockdown uh, Brian took making sure the show was on every day very seriously especially for those of his fans and friends who uh, have anxiety in, under normal circumstances, um, you know, the lockdown and everything certainly didn't help that. And, you know, having the consistency of this show being here every day was a big help for a lot of his fans and, and whatnot. And, you know, he's always, and I've always told him, me and the kids have always said that we're proud of him for being here and having that consistency because, you know, some of the uh, marijuana patients that watch the show, one of the reasons that they are patients is for extreme anxiety. And both he and I have said several times over the lockdown, you know, check on your friends, even though you can't go. You know, check on them, see how they're doing. And, you know, so, in a way, he's lucky that, you know, it's such a hard commute, you know, from the bedroom to this room, you know, to do it. Uh, don't pick on me for my long <laughs> I'm teasing you when you know. He's been running all day. Of course he wore himself. <laughs> and believe me, he appreciates every supporter he has, as do I. Oh, yeah, of course. I and speaking of him, I know all. here's him. Ooh. And him has returned. Howdy, y'all. I hope you have enjoyed my time. Come on, Chase. Before you get run over. There we go. And I will see you all later. Mm -hmm. What is happening, everybody? Ow. Just ran the chair into the back of my own foot. That felt good. <laughs> what is the good word? What's going on? What's happening? Hopefully everyone's having a good one. Hopefully you're enjoying your day. Beautiful sunny weather out there. Um, only on until 12.30 today. Then I'm out. Got stuff I gotta do. Life and all. Let me jump right in. Uh, let's see. I'm actually seeing some more music over here. But let's get into the new one of the new ones from Jumbo. It's a tune called Antibodies. And much love. You know I appreciate all my supporters, of course.
this is slow. It is. We don't do slow on this show. Really? No, no. All right, we'll go to Kai Koo, one of the newer artists here. Kai Koo is Finnish, by the way. It means echo. Check them out. Kai Koo Studios. This is Miami 86. What's up, Ricky? How are you, man? Nice to see you in Facebook land. What's going on, YouTubers? How's uh, how's things? Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, all the other places in which we're at. Cheers. Oh, yeah. As everyone knows, I have my one... Top, but my my hat, my little hat. Yeah, I want to say top hat, but no, nah, it's not. It's my little steampunk hat. But I have this one, as you all know. Well, this year I've gone something a little more upscale. So I have this one. Has the band and everything. Yeah. Take the glasses off the front. Ta da! Got that really cool skull on there.
Thank you. Yeah, this one here, I actually have, these are a pair of one of my riding goggles. Uh, for when I'm on the bikes, on the Harleys, or if I'm out, like, riding one of the the open-air vehicles, if I'm driving the Speedster, the Jeep, stuff like that. Yeah. Gotta be unique, right? Once again, the track right there was called Miami 86. It has such a groove, it has that thing going on in there. Every time I hear it, it just keeps making me think of the song White Lines from back in the day. Again, the song's called Miami 86. White Lines came out in 83. So, gee, I wonder why the vibe's there. Let's go. Brendan Philip McCusker coming up. I have some Cy Coonan right now out of R&B. It's a brand new track. Well, one of the brand new tracks that recently came out. It's called Twice the Man. I do have some bike videos up. Um, I actually have a Harley for sale, if anybody's interested. <laughs> Fires right up, title in hand, ride it away. Smokeaholics, how we doing over there? Nice to see you. I'll do riding lessons. Um, I mean, if it's your first bike, honestly, this isn't the bike for you. And I say that only because this bike's been like beefed up. It's been worked on. I've had people get on the bike that are used to big twins, and they come back and they're like, "Holy shit, this bike is fast!" <laughs> A few people. They took off, the front end was up. I came, they came back and I was like, oh, nice little takeoff there. And they were like, yeah, I didn't expect that. Gotcha day. Meaning, it was three years ago. It was three years ago that we received him when he was rescued. Um, I was going through my Facebook memories. He took off. He's shy. You see a photo of him when we first you know, when he was first brought here, no German Shepherd should be that thing. I mean, no dog should look like that, but no German Shepherd should ever be that thing. You know, you can, you can definitely see the difference. It's, it's pretty amazing. He had three years. Now, let me go over. Manny Draper. 
going to jump on to some hip hop. Song is Higher Learning, the artist, like I said, Manny Draper. Go to mannydraper.com if you dig what you hear. Yeah, they were talking wrestling. Andy Kaufman, Larry Zabisco. I knew the hat was going to do that. the top of the hour so good afternoon everybody then I hope you've had a good morning so far I'm gonna go uh, times infinity go to times infinity music dot bandcamp dot com check them out it's called ought to it's the name of this track I-91 southbound, I'm getting reports in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. There are uh, delays, there's congestion between exits 40 and 38A. It's right about two miles. So Rocky Neck State Park is filled to capacity and is closed. Greenwich, Connecticut. There's delays coming. Uh, reports of delays coming in on I-95 northbound as there's congestion between exits 4 and 9. So you're talking almost 6 miles. The 
need to be in any of those areas, plan accordingly. Again, Greenwich, Windsor Locks. East line. <laughs> CCC traffic reports. Well, I mean, literally, but what I am getting is real time traffic reports that are supplied by the state of Connecticut DOT and it goes through and is patched into their camera system it's patched into their weather system it's patched into a lot of things like I, I, I was I was pretty happy when somebody turned me on to this link um, I have traffic camera setups incidents closures delays transit incidents road work transit construction Message signs, weather alerts, weather forecasts, weather radar, construction projects, things going on at airports, train stations, ferries, park and rides, service plazas, rest areas, town boundaries. Like, I mean, it's it's pretty extensive. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those break down into subcategories. But I like the way you think. <laughs> no, we do not have road rage incidents. Those are not listed under this. Although I'm sure if, you know, an incident occurs, which we've gotten, like, again, in real time, it doesn't go into details of why. Usually that's reserved for, like, the police blotter and things like that. Or, again, those that are, ooh, live, look what's going on. Let me see here. I'm going to jump on over. We're going to do a little bit of On This Day. A few other things coming your way before uh, I'm out of here for this day. Now short on the broadcast in the morning, but what I'm going to do is later on tonight, 8.20-ish, I'll jump on for a couple hours, and we'll hang out some more. So you'll get a morning show and a night show. Again, who's spoiled? You are. <laughs> August 30th, 1949. Saw Hank Williams, who went into Herzog Studios in Cincinnati to record I'm so lonesome I could cry. Williams wrote the song originally intending that the words be spoken rather than sung. Now that song about loneliness was largely inspired by his troubled relationship with wife Audrey Shepard. Now we're going to go from 49 and jump up to 68. And we see the Birds. They released their sixth album, Sweetheart of the Rodeo. The album has proved to be a landmark for the entire 1970s Los Angeles country rock movement itself, and it was also influential on the outlaw country and even new traditionalist movements, as well as the so-called alternative country genre of the 90s and 2000s. Now, in 1969, on this date, just two weeks after the Woodstock Festival, the second Isle of Wight Festival took place over um, over 150,000 people turning up over the two days to see Bob Dylan, the band, Bloodwind Pig, Blonde on Blonde, Bonzo Dog Doo Da Da Band, <laughs> whoa, Edgar Burrow Band, Joe Cocker, Ansley Dunbar Family, Fat Mattress, Julie Felix, Free, Gypsy, Richie Havens, Moody Blues, The Knights, Tom Paxton, Percentile, 
The Pretty Things, Third Ear Band, and finally, The Who. For all of those artists, tickets, 25 shillings, or a whopping $3. Now, celebrities who attended this event, such as Keith Richards, Carly Watts, John and Yoko, George Harrison, Ringo Starr, Jane Fonda, Liz Taylor, Richard Burton, a whole bunch more. One Hit Wonders, Zager and Evans, on this date in 1969, starting at three weeks, number one on the UK singles charts with In the Year 2525. I always liked that too. That song, which was written by Rick Evans in 64, also spent six weeks at number one on the US charts. Oh, there you go. You're in the middle of moving stuff, huh? That's cool. That's cool. Let me go over here. By the way, make sure you're packed, rolled, and raring to go. you got 10 minutes for the next 20, don't you know? Don't miss it. Let's go. Mika Lett. Gonna hit some more R&B. Tune called, I Miss the Club. Wrapping up, I Miss the Club. There you go. That's Mika Lett there. Now, I'm going to do some country. Got to get a little bit on for some people. This goes out to our Christy and anyone else who like, likes country, of course. It's called Hung Up, and it comes from Brittany Clark. Singer, songwriter, cat lover, firefly chaser.
Again, hung up the artist Brittany Clark. Uh, one more track, then I have, well, a little Echo, a little Austin. That's where I get off. I will do, let's see. Behold the Buick. Heavy gravel gill. the Buick. I'm going to do a little Echopraxia's A Welcome Absence. Nice. It's 75 degrees out right now on the grounds of the compound. 51% humidity. Winds have buzzed the station at 12 miles an hour. Temperatures gonna reach the low 80s today. Gonna stay sunny, gonna stay decent. Even tomorrow, starting your week out right, beautiful sunny weather. Tuesday transitioning into Wednesday, you're gonna see a little bit of overcast, cloudy, dreary, drab. Thursday, sun. Fridays, sun. Saturday, Sundays, long-range forecast, still nice sunny weather. Temperatures are going to stay low 80s, mid 80s. Take advantage, enjoy.
personal preference. I like the old time smelling. All right, there we go. Now, I'm gonna jump on. This is Adam Griffith pulling Austin Woodward along with Shane Roberts in on one of his tracks. This is called Bell Glamour. Certainly not anything new. Milford Silver Sand State Park has been filled to capacity and closed. They are also not allowing walk-ins. That just came in. Mel Glamour. Again, Adam Griffith, Austin Woodward, Shane Roberts all together on that track. This is where I get off. I will be back, like I said, later on tonight, 8.20-ish. We'll hang out for a couple hours.
Absolutely. I will see you later on tonight, of course. Peace, my smoke eyes. Much love. We'll see you, Facebookers. All right. I'll catch you tonight, everybody. Later on.